Welcome back to the Roy Works channel. In today's video, we're gonna do tile work at Shane's house. So this is the finished product, and this is what we had to start with. In the previous video, we showed how we put the wonder board on and did all the prep work in the tub and shower area. So neither one of us have ever done uh, tiling in a tub and shower unit, but I, we asked a lot of questions, saw a couple of videos, and everything was unanimous that you start in the middle of the back of the shower. And what we did is got a reference mark right in the center that worked from the tub all the way to the top of the wonder board. So that's gonna be the point that we start from. We don't start from the right or left and work to the middle. We start from the middle and have all the cut ends towards the corners. So you can see here, Shane's also putting horizontal plumb line, uh, horizontal level lines um, every so often to have a reference point so we can measure off the top of the tiles that we're doing up to that line and make sure that we're running plumb going all the way up through, or I should say level. So you can see the first run of tile is like the most important. He's doing it all the way across and keeping even on the sides, he's keeping the cuts towards the corner. So here you can see Tracy's getting some of the uh, painting done between the beams. We decided to paint the floor underneath. Um, Shane had noticed that there's a lot of like, there was like staining and stuff like that. So the paint just made it, cleaned it up so much better. So you can see here he's using the spacers in between the tile. We uh, decided to go with a 3 uh spacer which is a little wide, but you're supposed to go three times the deviation in the tile. So if you have 16th deviation in the tile, like irregularities, you wanna go three times more than that. So you can see here we're cutting the tile. Subway tile cuts relatively easy. Um, that saw that we have there is about 25 years old and it's it works so well. So we mixed up the thin set and a good rule of thumb, I guess, for thin set is if you throw the thin set against the side of the bucket it should stick and that should kind of tell you that you're not making it too loose or too thick if it was either or it would just drop back into the bottom of the bucket so here when we put the tile in we've been putting uh, a run of mud on the wall and then gauging it with the trowel and then we've been also buttering the tile uh, just so it has a real good uh, bond to the wall. You can see here we're using a level. As we go, we're making sure, not so much that it's level, but we want to make sure it's flat with the previous uh, tile. So you'll see here, after I get this tile in, um, we hold the, the level against the bottom tile. I'm grabbing the spacers from the bottom because uh, we those are already dry uh, so I'm able to steal those away from there so you'll see here as you hold the level against the wall well I'm going to show you first this way this tile we want to make sure they're flat that way and then also vertically in a second I'll just show you what that does so you can see it's flat against that tile and then flat against that one. So if that was crooked at all, you'd see a space. We know the walls are pretty level, so um, now I'm doing it horizontally. And just, you can see that tile had to be pulled out a little bit. Those relatively flat. I'm not too worried about the 16th of an inch. I mean, they have irregularities in them anyway, but for the most part, we wanna make sure it's flat. You can see here, this is how Shane's gauging that um, thin set on the wall. Buttering it on first and then uh, hitting it with the gauge or the little spaces. So this took us quite a while to get up to this point. I have huge respect for guys that do tile because this is a lot of work. It's, a, it's tedious. You want to make sure every tile is straight. Because especially with subway tile, if that starts going bad, it looks really bad. So we got up to the ceiling there. Uh, we kind of overlapped 
off the wonder board a little bit onto the sheetrock, but that's okay. It's, it's pretty high, so that's never going to see water or anything. So now each one of us worked on a side, the left and right side, she to the left side. You can see there he started before me, so if he's higher than I am, you know, that's, he just started before me. <laughs> but, uh, so we got, in one day we got about that much done. Then that's like the second day we were able to get the rest of it got done. Uh, we also put, you could see there, a reference line on both sides, just so we kept it going up plumb. And that there was the last tile on that side. Um, I had to go back and kind of straighten that out because that was still kind of crooked. So at this point, Shane's starting to work on the niche. Uh, that was a lot of work. Um, we used uh, threshold material for the shelf in the bottom. Uh, and then Shane worked, used bull nose molding, uh, bull nose tile around the edges. That there probably took as much work as doing that whole wall. There was so many cuts. So at this point here, uh, it was getting too crowded in the bathtub. Trudy was a lot, a lot of help right there. Trace is still painting. Uh, it's working out good. It's looking beautiful. She's actually really good at painting. So now back to the bathroom. At this point now, I was starting to do the prep work for the floor, uh, putting a quarter inch back of wood on the floor. So I've found when you're trying to cut around obstacles like uh, jogs in the wall and stuff like that, it's better to lay the uh, wonder board right on the floor or the back of board. And right there you can see how much it overlaps. So if I measure off of all of these spots, first I'm getting where the jogs are in the wall and using a square to kind of locate where those are. Now I know that area has to be cut out, but just now how far out. So what I did is measure off of that little jog, the same space that that overlapped and made a mark across. And I did that with all the other spots like the tub, measured off there to the tub. You just wanna make sure it's square. It's square off of the spot that you're uh, cutting. And I just had that spot. So I went out and started cutting, cutting that. Um, what I found with this cutter, it's a lot easier to cut backwards. It's kind of different than you would think it would be. You would think like a skill saw, you'd push into the product, but it's actually better to drag it backwards. I used a diamond blade for that. Stuff is so heavy, it's so dense. So that worked out pretty good. I was able to cut that. I worked from the inside of the bathroom out or the outside wall in. So we already put the, uh, the door jam in. So to get that space, um, I ended up laying a piece of pine on the floor and resting the saw against it. So we were ready to start doing the tile. Uh, Shane didn't know if he wanted to go with a, um, like a side-by-side -side pattern or do a brick pattern. So we all kind of came together and laid it out and uh, trying to think of which would be the best way. We ended up going with this way, uh, which would be kind of like a brick pattern. Um, I feel like I like the subway. So laying the first tiles on the floor is really important. Uh, typically you want to have the full tiles at the door and against the tub, because that's kind of the full point. You don't want a bunch of cuts right by the door and you want to hide your cuts towards the outside wall. So we started in that very corner there and worked our way that way, did the closet, and then kind of worked our way out of the bathroom. It's kind of weird. It's kind of a weird process. You would think that you kind of want to do everything all the way across and work your way out of the bathroom or vice versa, but um, there's definitely a sequence to it to make it come out looking right. So you can see here, uh, the tiles that Shane got were really big. So those are, it, that's both good and bad because you get a lot of coverage 
but each tile takes a lot of work to get it to lay flat and make sure it's uh, not going to break or uh, doesn't look crooked. So you can see here he also butters this. Gets you, you definitely want to get enough thin set on this, but not enough, not too much where it's floating around everywhere. And on the tile, it's a little less critical that you cover everything. You just want to get like the majority of it on there and then gauge it, right? You know, make sure you come across and get that gauge uh, space on it. Those are porcelain tiles. Uh, those are really durable. That's what I'd recommend for anybody's floor. You don't, you have a lower, lot lower risk of cracking. So you can see he's working his way over and getting the closet done. The closet's like the something that you more likely try to try to put off and just get the bulk of the bathroom, but it's better to get it all done at once. You can see here he set the tile once and it kind of like had a little imperfection in it, so he wanted to fill in the mud a little bit on one side. This right here was probably the toughest cut in the whole bathroom. But he nailed it the first time. Just uh, took his time, got good measurements, and uh, cut a circle out with that grinder with a diamond blade on it. The other tough cut is around that toilet supply, which we ended up getting a diamond hole saw for it that I'll show you in a couple minutes. Uh, that worked really good for cutting that out. See that hole? It ends up being bigger than the supply, but that's good because it gives you some flexibility and that ends up having an discussion that covers that hole anyway. This is that diamond hole saw. So as you can see here, he's working his way out of the bathroom. Um, I'm being his cut guy and getting uh, some cuts done for him while he's prepping and putting the, the mortar down or the thin set. The weird thing with this thin set, it dries really quickly. So we kind of found out the hard way when we first started, we made up a, a bunch of thin set like we did with the, the, the wall thin set um, or the thin set on the walls, but we found it hardened up so quick. And that's good when you're setting big tiles, but we could only make up that much at a time. So we could barely get one tile done at a time and it would start hardening. Um, in the thin set, it actually said you could grout in two hours after doing the tile. So that tells you how fast it sets. So right here is the uh, grout that we used. It's a pre-mixed grout. Uh, he got a good deal on it and um, was able to use that for this process. So right here, you can see some of the thin set kind of squeezed out and um, kind of came to the surface of the tile. You want to get rid of that. You want to kind of like take a screwdriver and kind of pluck that thin set out because you want to have a little bit of area where the grout can get in there and, and uh, grab onto and you don't want the thin set to come all the way out to the, the surface. So at this point now he's starting to grout. He, he actually continued grouting and fixing that up. But the grout, it's really important. You only want to go like halfway up the wall before you start washing it and getting washing it off with a sponge uh, because it dries really quick also. You can see there too, we used the J-channel uh, to finish that edge off. And after it all dried, we started moving in the radiators. That's where that radiator is going. Uh, it's a nice empty spot right next to the lavatory. Came out really good. So upstairs, you can see we took a, a couple hours in the afternoon. We dispersed all the radiators. This one was a real heavy one. We had to bring that up the stairs. That was so heavy. And we brought some of the ones. This is the unfinished part of the house. That thing is massive. That was really heavy. Uh, this isn't going to be finished right off. Uh, so you can see the, the team has uh, all got together and we're picking out Shane's granite. Uh, that's going to be coming up in a future video, but I just want to leave you guys with uh, a little teaser on what's coming up. This was a cool warehouse that had a ton of granite, but thanks for hanging out with us today, guys, and I will see you in the next video.